Hey guys, Miss Peterson here. And today we're going to be looking at gravity and orbits. So what I have right here is a piece of stretchy fabric stretched around a hula hoop. This is going to simulate space-time, okay? And one of the ways we can think about gravity is it actually bends space-time. So I have a large mass here, it's about 500 grams, that I'm going to set in the center, okay? Now this means that any object I put around here is going to feel a force toward the center, much like how we, uh, here on Earth, Earth feels a force due to the sun. Now, some limitations of this simulation are this mass is only 500 grams. I'm going to be using a variety of marbles that are each, the smallest one's only 5 grams. This mass is only 100 times larger than that. For the sun and our solar system, the sun contains about 99.8% of all of the mass of the solar system. Okay? It's about 333,000 times more massive than the Earth. Okay? Even our biggest planet, Jupiter, is only 300 times the mass of the Earth. So the difference between 300 times and 333,000 times is quite significant. And that's going to be one of the limitations of our simulation here. But let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing I want you guys to think about is all of the factors that might affect the orbit of an object, okay, that's orbiting a larger mass. So what are the variables that influence this orbit? We've talked about uniform circular motion quite a bit so far, but what kinds of things affect the ability of an object to orbit? The next thing that we're going to be thinking about is what how the radius of an orbit affects the period of that object. So I want you guys to watch as these marbles orbit the mass. Okay? What might help is to keep track of time of the video and count how long it takes it to come toward you again. So if we're looking at this, I'm going to count it for this ball. It's going to start out at a big radius, okay? It's going to start out far from it. But we are stuck here on Earth. So as it travels around, there's friction between the ball and the fabric. This is going to cause our orbiting body to lose energy. Now, of course, in outer space, there is no friction. So there wouldn't quite be that loss of energy. That's how things are able to stay in rotation. But let's go ahead and look at this. So let me get it going. And it passed me once, twice, three times, four times, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and it's in the center. So as its radius decreased, what happened to its orbital period? The next thing we're going to look at is how the mass of orbiting bodies affects the period. So right here, I have a small marble. This small marble has a mass of 5.7 grams. Okay? Then I also have a similarly sized small metal ball. This one has a mass of 21.4 grams. Okay, so about four times the mass of the other one. And we're going to see how their orbits compare. Okay, so you want to be looking at how their orbits compare when they're at similar radiuses. I'll start by doing them both separately, and then I'll do a couple trials with them both together so you guys can start to get these ideas. Starting with the small light marble. So maybe you want to time these orbits. Okay, maybe you want to see how many times it orbits. But really think about that radius and what it's doing. We'll let that one fall in. And we'll try with this one. Let me do that one again and let it give it a little bit more speed in the start. Okay. Now I'm going to try 
pushing both of them together, trying to let them go at the same time with similar orbits. This is gonna be a little bit challenging because remember, two masses are gonna attract each other and you guys might see some of that interaction here. Okay, maybe we can even get it to orbit like a moon. Okay, that seemed to work pretty well. Let's do that one one more time. So you can see how the mass is affecting their period. Okay. I'll do them one more time separately. Okay, that one starts to degenerate. Oh, I just want to round a bit longer. I can try this also with these two balls. I have a large marble that has a mass of 21.1 grams and a large metal ball with a little bit over double that mass, a mass of 44.7 grams. So let's see how these ones look. Okay, right, try them both together. So we are definitely seeing that interaction between the two of them. Okay, right. now even if I take my lightest one and my heaviest one, okay, right, let's go ahead and get those going. Ooh, we got some gravity assist on that one. And again, you guys are really paying attention to does the mass or how does the mass affect the speed of the orbit if they're at the same radius. Oh, lost my marbles. So when they're all close together, does one seem to be going faster than another? When they're out here, does one seem to be going faster than another? Okay, how does it affect their period? Think about it. Okay, now just for one more fun little extra demonstration here. questions that sometimes comes up is why do all of our planets orbit the same direction? Okay, and this is actually a really good question. Why do all of our planets seem to go around the sun the same way? And the truth is, what we guess is that it wasn't like that in the beginning. In the beginning, you had planets moving in all different directions. Okay, all different directions. But what happens when that happens is some of them kind of start to cancel each other out. So once that happens, eventually you get just a couple planets moving in the same direction. And that's what they think happened to our solar system. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Bye, guys.